Well, I um, was, was in the organization group of it uh, in 1992. 1993, we had meetings, and in, yeah, in 1993, we chose a, a president. So I was the second president in 1994. So I've been involved with the food bank ever since. I really had a sister one time that needed to borrow, she and her husband needed to borrow funds. They went to a bank and all that, and this is years and years ago, they needed $50 to buy groceries. They went to a bank, the bank said, you have to take a loan of $1,000. And so if they couldn't afford to pay back 50, well, they needed, they, they knew they could pay back 50, but a thousand was a lot of money in those days. So, and there was no food banks in those days. So when the town was deciding, they knew, of course, I was always involved with the Lions Club, knew that they helped people at Christmas and that and so that's how I got really involved and through a na neighbor of mine um, and we knew the counselor and she asked me and so I went right up to the meetings and that was it. <laughs> I've always enjoyed community service and I, I spent 35 years working in public service so I understand uh, the giving aspect and, uh, and so when I retired and moved to town uh, I was born and raised here, moved away from my career, came back to town, wanted to get involved with something. And uh, a good friend of mine is a volunteer here at the food bank and said, you'd, you'd be interested in it. I came in and uh, I started sorting uh, the food coming in and my job was to sort the craft dinner while well, I became the craft dinner king. When the pandemic started, uh, we were very, very much just surprised like everyone else. And what, what do we do? And we knew that the shopping method, uh, we thought we could limit the number of people coming in to shop, properly space them out, wear masks and sanitize hands. But uh, we realized before we even did that one time that we couldn't do it and do it safely. So we had to go to the hamper mode. And that's where we pre-packed the, the, the non-perishable foods. And, uh, and we, we, through the town of uh, Alliston, they gave us uh, traffic barriers. So we barrier off this area of the parking lot here. And uh, the, our clients come on a Monday and Thursday afternoons and uh, they will pick up the, the prepackaged food. But in addition to the canned non-perishable food, we have another whole layer where we have to uh, package up a bag of produce, uh, a bag of uh, dairy, products, frozen food, and bread. And uh, in doing that, we had to also ensure our volunteers were safe, because we have uh, 60 to 70 volunteers. Most of them are elderly, and, uh, and they, they weren't comfortable coming in during the pandemic. So we've recruited a whole pile of new volunteers to help us in, in packing the bags. We'll only allow two to three people in the food bank at a time. Everybody has to wear a mask all, all the time in the food bank and with social distancing. The volunteer aspect is um, uh, we, we still need people to come in and help us out. We're short right now, uh, drivers with vehicles. We always need that because we, are, we do buy a lot of groceries um, and we do uh, pick up food to come into us. So that's um, a requirement. In addition, we had uh, a gentleman that retired from the grocery business and he was our food coordinator. So now we're looking for a, somebody that's uh, recently retired uh, with a food background would be marvelous to come and, and uh, see if they can help us out. This community, um, historically over the years, if, if we got a little short on money, it was about four or five phone calls and, and the community bounced into action. And, and I tell you, it's been a very generous community. Um, right now, and since COVID started, we have started up e-transfer into our bank account. And, uh, and that's helped a lot. We've got a lot of money that way. We do get money through the association, uh, through Food Banks Canada is the top layer. The next layer is Feed Ontario, and we're members of Feed Ontario. 
we were ready for, for a burst of, of new clients coming in. And what happened in the very initial stages, the first few weeks we opened, we noticed some of the clients that were coming regularly weren't coming anymore, but a bunch of new people were coming in, people with part-time jobs that weren't getting the hours, couldn't pay the rent, and uh, so they were coming to the food bank. So overall, our numbers are very steady uh, since the pandemic started. But with the government funding uh, assistance that uh, may be coming to an end, uh, we see our numbers are gonna go up. I know um, our clients, um, they come from various backgrounds for various reasons. And, and we're 100% non-judgmental. We're all volunteers. Uh, we, all, we all care with our hearts. And somebody comes looking for food. The first time they show up, and we're open Monday and Thursday afternoons only, when they show up, they'll get food. They never, nobody ever leaves without food. But at that point, we'll ask them to, if they wish to come back, to please register with us and, and we'll evaluate their situation and, and make them formal clients. Because of the space limitations with the sorting inside and we can only have a few people inside, uh, we are in the look for a, a larger facility um, because uh, the landlord here has been amazing and, and we, we would hate to leave this but um, we've talked to the landlord and there is no room for us to grow in this particular building and um, we do have the food bank here uh, we a basement another store a few doors down we have a warehouse in there and then we also have food stored in another warehouse uh, to keep us going so we, need, we would like to consolidate it all under one roof and uh, and help us transition into the future where hopefully we can shop again and uh, serve our clients that way